So Daniel was a teenage boy when he was taken captive by the Babylonian king. Uh, Babylon had conquered the nation of Israel, and they looked around. They took really the best of the best of all of the teenagers they could possibly find. And, and he was one of, those, one of those kids who was taken, and he was brought into the king's court, and he was going to be trained to, to one day serve the king. And part of his training meant that he had to eat the food that the king ate. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but for Daniel it was because um, the food that the king ate was considered unclean by God. And God had told his people, don't eat this food. Additionally, the food that the king ate had been offered to the, to the idols of the, the Babylonian people. And so in a way, it was like taking their food was a part of, of worship. It was saying that I worship the same gods that you do. And so Daniel had a choice to make. He, he had to decide, was he going to compromise the things that God told him to do? Was he going to compromise his faith in order to fit in, in order to please the king, and, and maybe even just in order to survive. And, and Daniel made a really hard choice, a difficult choice. The Bible says he resolved in his heart that he would not defile himself, that he would not compromise on what God had told him to do. Um, as a result of that, Daniel Daniel went to the to the leader, to, to the person who was responsible for training him, and asked permission to eat the food that God said he could eat. And somehow, for some reason, God made Daniel have favor with the man, and so he was able to eat his food and 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 not defile himself, even though everyone thought he was a little bit crazy. And and at the end of three years, the Bible says that there was none who were like Daniel. He was better than all the others from all the other kingdoms who had been trained, who had been developed, who had been prepared to serve for the king. And what this story reminds us is that when we go through times of difficulty, even like we're going through right now as a church, as, as, a, as a community, as a country, and as a world with this virus that we're all having to deal with, um, it, it leaves us with a choice. Are we going to compromise in order to fit in, in order to survive? Or are we going to remain faithful and trust God to bless us? I want to encourage you to think about three ways that we can remain faithful through times of, of difficulty, that we can remain faithful even when it's not always easy. Um, first of all, I want to encourage you to bless someone, to find someone that you can bless, share something that you have, and encourage someone, lift them up, find a way to, to just simply be a blessing to those around you. Um, secondly, find someone to tell the good news to. Tell, tell them about Jesus. Listen, the reason that we have hope, the reason that we don't have to worry, is that we know who is ultimately in control. What a great opportunity we have to tell people about Jesus. And then finally, stay connected to your spiritual family. Um, we, we can't meet together as a, as a group face to face, but we can get together online. We can call each other. We can text and send messages and, and stay connected. Even in our gatherings on Sunday that we're going to do online, we can stay connected because we need our spiritual family to help our faith grow strong, especially in times of difficulty. Listen, the world is crazy right now, and we don't know what the future holds, but we know that we can remain faithful to our God and that we can trust Him to bless us. God bless you. Have a great day.